All right, these questions just um, make me nervous just asking them, but we're talking about when our pets run into snakes. So first question, how do I know if my dog was bitten by a snake? Well, some of the symptoms that you'll see, well, most often the, the bite would occur on the nose, face, or on the feet. Uh, snakes are not normally aggressive, so the bite usually occur with an inquisitive dog sticking his nose or his feet in the area of the snake. So that's the first place you'll look for the lesion. Swelling mm -hmm. uh, would be the most common sign with some, some discharge of a bloody-like substance. All right, so what do you do immediately if you do suspect that? Well, you want to get him to the veterinarian as quickly as you can. If you can't do it immediately, then Benadryl at the dose of one milligram a pound will help for a while, but you want to uh, get him to your veterinarian as quickly as you can. Okay. All right. This is a horrible thought to me, but our next question, what should I do if my pet gets bitten by a snake like a copperhead or a rattlesnake? Now, the rattles rattlesnake is the most venomous of these venomous snakes in this area. Uh, we don't see it as often as we do copperheads. Copperheads are pro perhaps the most common that we see, uh, and that's uh, probably the least uh, harmful of the snakes that we are dealing with. So when, if they do get bitten though, are the, how quickly will they react to the venom that is in the, the snake? <laughs> it, 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 it depends. Uh, if uh, it gets near the central nervous system area, you'll see more signs in of it, uh, such as, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, more signs of it, such <laughs> as uh, nervous twitching and uh, even to the point of collapsing oh. if it's uh, enough venom and it gets in the central nervous system. Okay, well, we do not want any of that. So let's just uh, right. you know, be careful. I know they can run into them sometimes and a lot of outdoor dogs that run around and you know, land and woods and stuff may encounter them more. All right, well, let's move to this. What can pet owners do to make sure that their pets are ready for the cooler temperatures as we uh, start fall this afternoon? We know it's going to get a lot cooler. So uh, talk about that for a moment. What do we do? Well, one of the things you got to do is make sure you have adequate shelter for the dog. Uh, as it rains and it gets cold, then they need to be in an enclosed area. And going into the winter, if you have a dog that's not used to being outside, they need to be acclimated, which means that uh, slowly as it gets colder and colder, then the animal needs to be acclimated to that. You don't want to put an animal outside when it's uh, zero or sub-zero weather, uh, when it's not been out there the whole while, but they can get acclimated as uh, if you leave them outside during that change of the seasons. So what is the best way to put something extra out there to help them stay warm? I've heard people put a light in a dog house or extra blankets. Does it make that much of a difference? Yes, all of those things uh, will help. Now the dog will generate heat uh, from their body and they'll accumulate an uh, additional level of fat underneath the skin which insulates them and they'll use that to generate heat. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if they're sheltered from the elements, then they'll be able to stay warm in an enclosed area. Uh, blankets, that kind of thing also can be helpful, yes. Okay, so they're, they're, the way God made them, their bodies uh, work to keep them safe even under certain conditions, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. Acclimation is the key. All right, all right, good to see you and let your puppy dog there figure out who's coming in. Yes, you heard that, didn't I you? Did. I did. I did. All right. <laughs> Dr. Jerome Williams, Red Mountain Animal Clinic. Good to see you. Okay. Take care. Okay. Stay safe. You too.